Hi, it's Patricia Coughlin again. Uh, you know, I was thinking about the last post on countertransference and the post before that, which was about defense work and seeing how the two of them are closely related, especially when we're talking about what we might call universal countertransference, those uh, emotional reactions and behaviors that the patient is unconsciously pulling for from others, including the therapist. If you think about it, it's the patient's defenses that we have negative feelings about. Um, as I often say to my trainees, once defenses break down, feelings break through, you get the deep repression of memories, shedding light on the nature of the person's problems. They become who they really are. There's nobody you don't like. So when you're having some kind of, well, either negative feeling and reaction, boredom, irritation, uh, dread, you know, not wanting to see the person, oh no, not him again, um, or sort of seduced by them, then you know almost by definition that it's the patient's defenses in all likelihood character defenses that are actually triggering those feelings. So this is the other really good reason to do thorough defense work as soon as possible. Uh, we want defenses out of operation both because it's that excessive reliance on defenses that's really causing and perpetuating the patient's suffering, but also because it's those defenses that are most likely to trigger our countertransference and then to um, invite, in a sense, a, an unhealthy uh, relationship in which you have that sort of transference, countertransference um, interlocking. So, a good example of this is a patient who tends to be passive, helpless, dependent, compliant. If those defenses are not brought to awareness, and if you're not able to help them turn on those defenses, it's very likely that you are going to get into some sort of complementary role where you are over-functioning, right? They're being passive, you're being overly active, they're being helpless, you're taking charge or somehow feeling it's your responsibility to make this person better. So again, these are two really good primary reasons why you want to do the defense work, show the patient the cost of their defenses and help them turn on it and relinquish it so that they can be who they really are, reveal themselves honestly and authentically, and then you can respond to who they really are and not to their defensive uh, facade, which again is likely to provoke uh, some kind of countertransference. So I, I hope that's a helpful clarification. And in my next video, I will uh, speak to a request by someone who wanted to hear about the process of repression, understanding what is that depressive, repressive uh, phenomenon. Um, how do we understand it? How do we work with it? So that'll be next up. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.